What's up everybody? My name is Ron Empire and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to provide you a very detailed guide to mining. This video is to help you understand the game's leveling system so that you can maximize your mining efficiency. If you like this video and or find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. I spent a lot of time testing and finding the numbers presented in this video myself. I didn't steal this number from anybody or anywhere on the web because these numbers are not posted or talked about anywhere on the web that I can find. This video might be long, so remember to check my video description where I will provide chapter jumps so you can directly skip to the wall blocks that you're interested in. Okay, let's get started. All right, I'm gonna choose my Twitch world here and I'm gonna pick the demo character. Okay. Uh, I'm okay. So I'm going to show you the world that I've I've got prepared with all the wall blocks currently in the game. This will help me explain how you can get experience from mining them efficiently. Now there are two questions you should ask yourself when mining: Do you want to level up as fast as possible, or do you want to clear out the landscape as fast as possible? These are two different things. Um. All right. Let me. Let me see here. I will show you. Uh, first, okay, let's start with the basics so that uh, you understand how mining works. When you start out with a background character that is not a miner, right, in this case we picked a, um, a fighter, your skill, your mining skill is at zero, right? This mining skill is at zero. The miner background starts off at level three or three skill points with a copper pickaxe. So if had you picked the, the miner, this will actually say three, this will say zero, and then the mining damage will be plus three mining damage. All right, and this, let me, let me click on this to show you. Oh, by the way, I, I still don't recommend choosing a the miner as a background because the first three skill points can easily be obtained in like two to three minutes of mining, okay? The copper pickaxe you get is not very good to have because of the current durability costs. I actually don't even recommend crafting a copper pickaxe. You, the idea here is that you can skip over a lot of the, um, the different tier pickaxes, right? Um, because then, you know, you, you don't have to like recraft them. You don't have to, you know, scrap them or maintain durability on them. Okay, so let me uh, show you here, right? So if you clicked on this, this will show you, right? Um, all characters start with a base mining damage of 20 at skill level zero. Right, so since we picked a character here with zero. So each each skill point here gives you one mining damage, right? So at, at 100 mining uh, max out skill, it's, it's plus 100 mining damage. Okay, so that means that a background miner will start off with 23 because he got the three points added to this 20 mining damage. So 20 is, is the absolute bare minimum you'll get when you first start a character, right? And that's plenty enough to, to actually start mining with your bare hands. You don't even need a pickaxe to do anything, okay? Now, um, for every five skill points right here, you gain one talent point, right? So this, this number here, when it says point zero, and this over here, this number here, it, these two numbers are not the same. So whenever you get five points of this, you get one point of this. So let's say at, at level 10, you're going to get two points of this. So what this means is that if you take 100 and divide by 5, you will eventually get 20, 20 points. Okay, now here's the extra thing though. When you max out to level 100, you're going to get another bonus 5 points for a total of 25 points. So when you're at 99, right, you're only going to get 19 points at, at uh, skill level 99. But once you hit that level 100, you're going to get the one point for the every five, and then you're going to get an, an extra five points. Okay. So at, at level 100, you'll have 25 uh, talent points to spend on this tree. And I will go over this talent tree later on. Okay. Because I don't, we don't need to talk about this right away. The only thing that really matters at, uh, at the moment is the first uh, node, which is where you're going to be spending, you know, your first uh, five points of talent, anyways, because you can't do any of these other ones without going through the first node, right? Each one of these require five of the previous node that's connected to it 
to be able to put points into. All right. So so right now, this is the only thing that I want to point out here. So at level zero or at level one, right, you'll get plus two percent mining damage. So when you max this out, five out of five, you're going to get plus ten percent percent mining damage, and that's very key here. Is that it's a percent. Okay. So what does what does percent mining damage bonus mean? Well, okay, this multiply is is sorry, this percentage damage is a multiplier applied to your total mining damage and then added on as a bonus. Okay. So, for example, if you max out your character, right, to 100 like I mentioned earlier, you're going to get 120 mining damage. This is before you spend any points, right? So if you max out this number over here and you haven't spent any points in this talent tree, right, your character should should actually say 120 mining damage. This is before spending any talent points. Now, my, the point here that I want to make is that even if you picked a miner, you're going to end up with 120 dam mining damage at level 100. A, a background miner does not go over 100 like you know 103 or something like that this is like not like auction not included because where where you get like the starting perk that starting perk number can actually be beyond the max cap well everyone in this game or every character in this game will have eventually the same cap limit regardless of what background you choose right the background you choose just gives you a head start on the um the skill points that's all it is so this fighter here will will eventually hit 100. It won't go to 103. All right. So that's that's another key important thing I wanted to point out. Okay. So without any any you know any gears on and any the pickaxe selected, max level is 120 mining damage. And once you start spending points in this, let's say you max this out to 10%, right? Well, that means that you take 120 right here, multiply by 10%, which is 12 points. Then that 12 points is then added to your 120. So ultimately, this will, will show up 132. As you start spending points on this, this number will start changing. And then once you've finished out spending all five points, this number here will just say 132. You don't actually get like the, um, the indication of the, the plus 2% you know, mining damage. See how like this says, you know, 100% movement speed, or later it'll say like, you know, something like percent attack speed. All that is actually going to just show up as a flat number here, and it won't actually show up as percent, you know, mining damage bonus. So you'll never see your total mining percent damage bonus here. It's just going to be in here. All right, so moving on. Okay, so now you're asking, okay, well, how do I level up, you know, the skill points? Obviously, you know, if you do some mining, you're going to level up your skill skill points. But I want to go into a little bit more detail uh, regarding that. Okay. You need to get experience points to level up skill points. Okay. It, it's not just hitting, you know, or mining something. Uh, your your hitting and mining has to give skill points. All right. So you can't just go right, you know, for example, you can't just go over here, you know, and hit this. Right, and expect to get mining mining skills, right? You can't just equip any random pickaxe, right? You can't just, you know, grab a pickaxe, right? And then just go hit this wall over here and, and hope to get mining like skill skill points. It doesn't work like that. You need to get you need to to be able to, to get enough mining damage to meet the, the minimum cutoff, right, for getting experience points. But I'll explain that in a little bit. First let me explain the mechanics of this little skill bar here. All right. Um, each skill in your skills tab has a tiny little gray white progress bar, uh, white progress bar. So since I did a little running around, you'll see that little white progress bar here starts moving. Right now, this gray bar just represents the entire experience bar. Okay. Um, the thing that I want to point out though, is that uh, there is a limited number of blocks here that represents your actual experience points. Okay, the the experience points requirement starts off really small at level zero, and then it'll eventually increase progressively to one hundred. So let's say right now we're at zero, 
this little experience bar might represent a requirement of, I don't know, 30 or something. I, I'm, I'm rounding or 50 or something, but I'm, I'm guessing, right? The requirement here might be small, but once you get towards like 100 or 90 or something like that, this experience bar might represent um, 1,000 or 2,000, you know, um, experience points required. Okay, so that that experience bar varies depending on the skill that you're at. Okay, now let me um, let me show you the pixel blow up. Right here, this little right here in this block right here, I just I just did a cutout of this little block here and I blew it up so that you guys can see it better. There are tiny there are 18 tiny pixel blocks used to re represent your progress um, for this uh, experience right here. Right. So, uh, let me see if I can, well, I can't put my mouse on this as an overlay. But my, my point here is that there's 18 of these blocks. You'll never actually get an in-between, right? The game is, is using like a, um, a pixel style art. So the tiny experience bar has only 18 blocks on it to represent the, the experience in that tiny little section of, of your, your skill tab. Right, you'll you'll never actually see a, like half a pixel or like a quarter of a pixel. The game will always use like one full pixel block or looking or or a pixel looking block. Okay. Um, so let's say hypothetically, uh, if the experience bar is 180 points experience, then each block will represent you know 10 experience points. All right. Um, now, when the bar is at zero, there are no pixels on the bar. Okay, that is true. Okay, uh, here's the important detail. Your first hit that gives experience will always move the bar by one pixel, right? So as I mentioned, like this, the, the tiny little bar might be representative of 10 experience points, but on the very first hit when the bar is at zero, it will always give you the first pixel and it, it, it just rounds up like the, the first experience points up. And says, "Okay, well, we're gonna we're gonna give you one one pixel, and this this is very key because this is how I was able to test the various numbers by using this um, this behavior." Okay. Now, after that, after your first pixel, right, to get to the next pixel progress bar, you need to get ten more hits. So as you do the second hit, third hit, the fourth hit, it's not going to to move that one pixel to the next pixel. Because you need to complete the full, um, the full experience points that represents that tiny little block. Okay, so it's only in the first, you know, um, the first hit of that that zero empty bar will you get that pixel. Okay. All right. So uh, the number of experience hits required increases each skill level. Okay. So I've mentioned that. All right. But at the very beginning of every blank bar, the first hit. Will will give you one pixel, all right. So that that's very helpful. All right. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to hide this little pixel image here, and then we'll move on. Okay. All right. So the thing here is that experience points are based on good hits. It's not based on how much damage you do. You can do a ton of damage in one hit, but you're you're not going to get experience for the hit okay so let's say a wall takes two hits to break so you get two experience points but then later you one shot the wall because your mining damage is like two times more than what it used to be now you don't get two experience points anymore you only get one right so the first time around like early on in the game you might do like you know two hits or three hits you're going to get three experience points for that wall before it breaks. So if your third hit breaks breaks the wall, you get three points, right? But then later you come back and then your your mining damage is like five times or three times more than what it used to be. And then now you're, you're only hitting the wall once and it breaks. Well, the difference is the first time around you're getting three experience points. And then now later in the game, you're only getting one experience points. So... You don't get experience. Okay, the other thing too that I want to mention is you don't get experience for breaking a wall. You're getting experience for hitting the wall. It just so happens the wall broke on the hit, right? The key takeaway here is the more hits you do to a wall before it breaks, the more experience you get from the wall. 
breaking a wall does not give you extra experience points. All right, so to answer the question you know, posed at the beginning of the, of the stream, if you want to level up really fast, it's more efficient to find walls that you can do multiple hits that give you experience points before breaking it. All right, now if you want to clear out a bunch of walls really fast, right, meaning less hits to break a wall, you're going to gain experience more slowly as a trade-off because you have to move between wall to wall. Like when you break a wall, you have to move to the next wall, right? So for example, if you can do 30 hits to a wall without moving, that's more efficient than breaking 30 walls with one hit each in terms of leveling up really fast, right? But if you can clear 30 tiles with one hit each, you're clearing the landscape faster, right? Because you're, you're plowing through Let's, you know, for example, the sand walls, right? If, if you're hitting all the sand walls in one hit, you know, clearing 30 sand wall tiles, you can go through 30, you know, sand wall tiles really quickly, right? But at the end of the day, you're only getting 30 experience points, right? You, you'll, clear the, you're, you'll clear out the whole entire wall blocks, 30 blocks, you know, of, of the wall uh, really fast, but you're not getting as, as much EXP. But let's say, you know, it takes you 30 hits to, to clear out, like, 30 block stone wall, right? You're spending 30, 30 points for each one of those 30 blocks. So take 30 times 30, you know, that's, you're getting 90 points of experience. Um, 30 times 30, no, 900 points of experience, right? Yeah, 900 points of experience because 30 blocks and, and the, the 30, 30 hits. So you get 900 experience points going through 30 blocks of stone, right? It's going to be really slow, but you're going to get more experience. So that's that's my point here, right? So the more hits you do to a wall before it breaks, the more experience you get. And that's efficient, right? For for leveling up. If that's your goal, you want to level up um, really fast, that's way better than trying to like clear a landscape. Okay. All right, so let's um let's go to the next topic. What qualifies for an experience hit or a good hit, all right? Each wall, as I mentioned earlier, has a minimum number of mining damage required for an experience hit, right? So when, remember I was demonstrating hitting this wall, I'm not getting anything, right? But if let's say like, remember how I, I told you like in the example I said like, hey, you know, your first hit, if it gives you experience, your the block is gonna move up. So let's go ahead and demonstrate this, right? This wall right here is the, the dirt block, right? This to the left is sand block. This is the turf block right here, and this is the dirt block right here. And these two are, are, are pretty much exactly the same, right? So let me go ahead and hit this. You see this? It moves one pixel, right? If the second hit is not going to move the pixel, right? It's probably going to be like five hits total that moves to the next block. But my, my point here is that you only get experience if you meet the minimum requirement. And I'll go over the minimum requirement for every one of those in a little bit here. All right. Uh, okay, so one of the other things, too, that I want to point out, right, if you don't meet the minimum requirement, you don't get the experience. But, okay, here's here's the other mechanic to the game, or, you know, hidden mechanic. But you could damage the wall and eventually break the wall, right? So So even though I don't meet the minimum requirement for this one right here, right, right, see how, like, I'm not, I'm not moving the experience bars? Right, I can do like a ton of this, right? Um, it's possible to eventually break this even though I don't meet the minimum requirement. I think I might need a little more blocks, but I'll show you that in a little bit when we when we get there, when I go through every single wall, all right? So I just want to point out to you that it is possible to break a wall, right, and not get experience. And I will demonstrate that actually in, in a little bit. Because um, right now, this is not the best demonstration using this wall. I have to give, give it a little bit more damage, okay? Now, and, and this is, this and moving on to what I was about to say here is, um, and it, it's, it's possible to break a wall and get no experience from it. Um, now, there might be an armor or damage reduction mechanic to the walls. Now, I didn't test for this, okay? So I... I mean, I, I could I could leave this running all day and see if it actually breaks the wall and test it, but I didn't test for this. But I think that 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 there is a, a possibility that there is a armor damage reduction mechanics to the walls, similar to 
uh, the purple slime uh, factory. In the video that I showed you with the AFK melee, where we made like a bunch of purple slimes and hitting it with our bare fist, and our bare fist was only doing like 12 points of damage, right? Um, it, it's possible that the um, the walls might have like a uh, damage reduction mechanic with an armor that ignores the damage completely that if it's too low and the wall might not break at all. So if I keep doing this and if my, or, or even this one over here, right, um, there might be some sort of damage reduction and it, this wall might not ever break even though I'm doing like 20 hits. And that's because there might be like a, uh, a some sort of damage reduction that ignores my 20 hit. Right. Um, all right. So, okay. One, okay. One thing I do want to clarify. Some people are floating around the number 20 as a magic number saying that if it takes more than 20 hits to break a wall, you don't get any experience. Well, I can say that that's not true. I've actually broken a wall with more than 30 hits and still got experience for every single one of those hits. Right. So, the, the 20 number thing, I, I wouldn't rely on a specific magic number given the way that this game is early access and it is possible to break walls uh, and get experience that's more than 20 hits. Such as the hive wall, I've managed to, to do 32 to 33 hits on a hive wall, got full experience and it broke. Um, same goes with uh, the stone wall, right? So just want to throw that out there is that there is no real magic number in terms of deciding whether you're getting experience or not. You have to follow my my minimum cutoff number if you really want to min-max, okay? Now, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, so what about the audio sound effects, right? Because if you notice, like here, when you're punching this, let me, hit, let me make it, do it for you so you can hear it. You hear that? It sounds like a, a whip, like a dud dud whip, right? And then let me show you this one. You see that? Clear sound difference. Clear sound difference, right? One sounds like you're okay. So at first, I thought these sounds had something to do with being able to break the wall or not, or if it's related to getting experience or not, right? I can tell you that the sound effects is a rough estimate, it is not accurate, okay? The first sound appears as if you're not. You're not putting any uh, any dent in the wall and not getting experience. The second sound makes it seem like you're making good progress in breaking the wall and getting experience. Okay, so that that was my first impression. The thresholds for these two sounds are actually inaccurate or way off from the minimum damage required for experience. I actually spent a lot of time finding that damage and testing it. Okay, for example, you could actually break the wall right? You could actually break the wall, and I, I mentioned this before, and still hear that dud 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 sound and get no experience points. I mentioned that earlier, All right? So that dud 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 sound cannot be relied upon because I've, I've gotten that sound, I've broken a wall, and I've gotten full, ex, uh, uh, full, full exp experience points before, right? And I've broken a wall where I've gotten no experience points, right? And, he, and still hear that dud, dud, dud sound. So that dud, dud, the sound doesn't mean that you're not going to break a wall at all. It, it's just playing that sound. And it could mean that you're not getting any experience points, right? But there's the threshold is, is, is not accurate, okay? Now, this dud, dud, dud sound doesn't mean you can't break a wall. I just said that, right? You can break a wall and still hear that sound. Um, and uh, the second sound, let's see here. The second sound here, okay, now if you're hearing the breaking sound, okay, uh, again, like I said, it's not completely, you know, in, it's not completely accurate, but you are definitely going to get experience points, and you are definitely going to break the wall, right? So hearing the sound, even though it's not completely 100% accurate, it will still give you experience points, and it will still get, it will still break the wall, right? But... This is not maximizing the experience gain per wall if you're just completely relying on that breaking sound effect, all right? There is a wiki that lists the numbers for this sound effect breakpoint. 
but the numbers on the wiki are not the actual minimum number for getting experience points. Okay, which I did extensive testing and found the actual minimum damage required for experience, which I'm going to be sharing with you guys today. Okay. And this is really starting to sound like an infomercial because I'm holding out, showing you the numbers. Um, okay, so, but before I share you the numbers, well, let's let's talk about how to get mining damage. Okay, um, so let's let's talk about how do you get mining damage first, because it makes more sense, right, to to understand, um, you know, how you get mining damage first before I, I present you the minimum mining damage required, right? So. You can get mining damage through equipment and gears, right? So right now my character has nothing, uh, such as you know pickaxe, mining rings, offhand, armors give you mining damage as well. So let's go over these these different you know equipments and gears. So I've I prepared a box with everything in the game that's related to stuff that you can equip that will give you mining damage or mining damage increase, right? All right, so right here. The bronze helm. This helm is something that you can actually craft uh, using copper and tin on the uh, the tin anvil. It gives you plus percent mining damage. It doesn't give you a flat number. It gives you a percent damage. And we'll go over that in a little bit. This also gives you percent damage. This is the caveling pants that drops off of the little caveling guys in the Forgotten Runes, the guys that run around the dark with the red eyes, right? The larva helm. Now this gives you plus 26 mining damage flat number, right? Unlike this one is percent damage number. So a lot of times you might want to play with these two later on to see which one actually gives more. Um, I mean, it, you can calculate this, by the way, and figure out what the cutoff is. I, I can tell you that later. Um, the larva chest is also a flat number, 28 plus 28 mining damage, right? These two actually are great as a set combo because you can actually walk around in the... Um, the clay biome and all the on the little maggots and larvas will ignore you, right? This is really great to have as a set. And then moving down, these are the rings that you can get in the game early on. Over here, I, I I'll get to this column last. So I've divided you know this column here as as late game content, and these this here are stuff that you can actually easily acquire. This one you can acquire easily by crafting. This one you can acquire by by you know, farming the or killing the caveling guys, right? These two, a little bit harder to acquire. Uh, they came from, you can get them from the larva chest uh, that looks like this down here, right? You can get that from the larva chest uh, in the uh, the cave biome, right? Or they can, or this one can drop off of the hive mother, and this one can drop off of Glorm, right? But I found both of these actually from from a chest, All right? So now let's oh, say, so let me go back to the rings again. So this ring is called the Ring of Stone. It gives you plus 14 mining damage. You get this very early on uh, from the dirt wall blocks, right? The dirt wall blocks, when you hit it, these fall out from the dirt walls. And I have two sets here, or two of these, because, you know, early on, you might want to just equip both of these. Because, you know, you don't you don't have any other rings to, to, to fill up the slot very early in the beginning of the game. Now, the next ring up is called the Ring of Rock. Now, if you notice, like, when you first get this, it says, like, set, two set, right? It's all in yellow um, to actually benefit from that, right? So the first time you equip this, right, you see how it's, it, it lights up? It's white, Ring of Rocks, or Ring of Stone, but the second one is not lit up. So if you take this off, right, you see how, like, the Ring of Rock, or Ring of, yeah, Ring of Stone is not uh, highlighted, so you put it on, it's highlighted, right? So the uh, other item here is the Ring of Rock. This is the other set. And a lot of people forget to, or, or, or don't realize that they're a set, right? And they don't realize that they're getting that extra bonus. You see how like together gives you like a huge bonus? But if you take it off, you don't get that 49 bonus. But if you put this on, you only get 28, right? For, or 28 plus, uh, Plus the twenty that we had gives you forty eight. So you want to you want to find this set here very early in the game because that will really help you get your mining damage up, right? And this is found in the um, the clay biome from the clay walls. That you do have a chance to drop that, and the uh, stone biome, which the stone blocks actually has a chance to to drop these, right? And then the next up are the um, the pickaxe. This one you can craft easily 
with the, t the tab key. Most people forget, but you can craft the pickaxe. I don't recommend even bothering with this. It's just a waste of time to use the wooden pickaxe. It's only giving you plus 15 mining damage. It's only going to be very useful, maybe situational at the very beginning of the game. And I'll show you the situation where you might use it. Okay, uh, copper pickaxe, tin pickaxe, iron pickaxe. These are things that you can craft. Let's move over to the other craftable items late game. Once you get into the Aziest Wilderness, you'll get Scarlet Bars or Scar Scarlet Ores. You can craft the uh, Orb Lantern, which gives you plus. This is an offhand that goes right here. It gives you Glow, and it also gives you Mining Damage. And then this one here is the Scarlet Pickaxe, which you can craft using the Scarlet Bars. Okay, so this is craftable items. Now, one of the things I want to point out is that this is because this version is version 3.7 or 0 0.3.7. Uh, any version that you play before this, uh, before 3. Point, uh, 0 0.3.2, whatever, or 3, um, the caving pants do not have the plus 8% uh, mining damage. And the orb doesn't have that plus 9% mining damage. Right? So check your version if you're, you know, to see if you're playing an older version. Um, but the newer versions will have this percentage. All right, so this, this next column right here is the Aziest Beak Necklace. These two items drop of Aziest, um, the Bird Boss, Aziest, the Sky Titan, right? The Ancient Pickaxe is another one. It's got mining speed on it. This will help you greatly if you're actually doing multiple hits standing still to the same block. And this mining speed will actually make you, um, you know, or improve your efficiency on on doing multiple hits to the same block. This uh, this necklace here gives you mining damage. This is the only necklace that actually gives you plus mining damage, right? This one over here is mining speed, which is not the same as this one. Um, I would go with mining damage over speed unless unless you you figure it out uh, the minimum cutoff uh, damage point, like I'm going to explain to you later, and you actually don't need this to make the minimum cutoff. You can actually wear this to increase your mining speed, right? Um, so this column here, I'll show you, or I'll talk about. These items here can only be acquired from this talent point right here. So once you hit like, um, once you spend all seventy-five points going this way, right? This, this, and this uh, on your eightieth talent point, or sorry, eighty, eighty, eightieth on your eighty uh, skill level, right? Eighty out of hundred. You're going to get one new talent point, and that one new point can actually go over here. And you really only need one point in this because I actually got all these items at a drop rate of one per hour mining, right? So I've managed to get all of these in like three hours or, or four hours. So that's that's how you can get them. You, you can get it from this talent here. Okay, and then um, so the question here is... Okay, um, now remember how I mentioned this over here and it's like percent damage once you max it out? That actually is is uh, tallied up as a total. It's not compounding or additive. Or it's additive. Um, so this number here, this number here are mining percent damage and this number here. So what it does is it takes all of your total percent damage all at once, right? And you add it up all the, all the percentage at once so you don't actually multiply on top of another multiplier on top of another multiplier. You just added all the numbers at once, and then it it applies it to the total mining damage here with all your gears on that is plus mining damage, and then that multiplier is then uh, multiplied on top of that and then added on at, as a final number as a bonus. So I kind of roughly explained that earlier on. Okay, now the next thing that I want to talk about: Do you really need a pickaxe for mining? Do certain walls require a certain pickaxe? Okay, some people claim that you know a certain pickaxe is required for a certain wall. This is not true. Walls don't have a pickaxe requirement, right? Only a minimum damage requirement, right? For 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 experience points. Once you've or or a minimum damage requirement in general for breaking the wall, because like I said, you could break the wall and not get experience points. And I didn't test for that minimum breakpoint because you know it, re it would require sitting here all day trying to like pound on the wall and see if I, I can break it or not. I, I didn't test fully for every single wall for that you know that magic number, 
the only magic number that I tested for in this video is whether you're gonna, you're going to get experience points or not. And that's the only thing that you really care about, right? Why would you want to punch a wall and not get experience points and just do that all day, right? Because that's just that's just silly, right? Um, so my point here though is that you don't need a pickaxe for a certain wall. You just need mining damage, right? Um, to break a wall. Um, it, you, you can actually punch, as I showed you earlier. You, I was punching this and I was able to get experience points, right? See how I can punch this and I can break the wall. Right, you know what we'll see. See that? I just put this wall back down, right? So a pickaxe is not required to to do mining. Um, all right, so what about durability costs for repairing a pickaxe? Well, at the version I'm playing right now, 0 0.3.7, uh, they've changed the the uh, the durability and repair mechanics, so these things don't use scrap anymore. And the, and the developer said they might change that back to the scrap mechanics, right? So I'm not going to talk too much about the whole durability thing because this, that just might negate the whole, or might this make this video a lot uh, obsolete later once they change the durability mechanics. But overall, the only thing I I can tell you, or or what I can say in my part, is that I prefer not to use pickaxe whenever possible, right? Uh, because I just don't want to pay the repair costs because the current um, the current durability mechanic requires you to pay the material that was used to craft these things, right? So in this case, if this breaks to zero durability, I have to spend uh, copper bars. I'm not going to ever do that. I have to spend iron bars to do this. I have to spend scarlet bars for the, for the repairs on this. I kind of avoid using these bars or so these pickaxe whenever possible right if i absolutely need to clear something really fast i might use the pickaxe because i don't have enough mining damage to clear it really fast so that's the only time i might use a, a pickaxe is if i need to meet the minimum mining damage one and i'll show you that also in a little bit on where we might need to use some of these pickaxe to meet the requirement okay uh great so now let's get into the juicy stuff. Let's talk about the different walls that you can mine in the game, um, and their damage, their damage numbers, or their their minimum required uh, damage numbers. Okay, but let's first let's walk through all the walls, and then I'll switch over to a character to do this. Okay, so this first wall here is the sand wall, right? The sand wall, you know, you can break this in one hit, regardless of your your uh, mining damage, right? It's the, the requirement for this is really low, right? This is the, the I mentioned earlier. This is the uh, dirt block. This is the turf block. This here is the clay wall. This here is the stone wall. This here is the grass wall, which is in the Asius wilderness. The reason I place this one in front of the hive wall is because I sorted it out based on the minimum uh, experience points required. This actually has a lower experience points required than this one over here, or uh, the low a low mining damage requirement to get experience points. This is the hive wall, right, which is found actually near the uh, the clay biome, right? So I, I, let, I place this all the way over here because the minimum uh, damage requirement is a lot higher than this one. Okay, and uh, this one right here is the mold wall, which is found in the uh, Aesius Wilderness in the uh, mold dungeon, right? This wall is very tough to break, and I'm going to do like a a full video on this later. We will mention or touch up on this later on. Now this here is the the wooden wall which is used uh, which is crafted from from the uh, dirt wall. I think you mix that with with wood or something and you get this wall. The this wall all the craftable walls are very equivalent to to the materials that was used to craft craft them, right? Uh, this one right here is the stone wall which is coming from the stone uh, the stone brick wall comes from the stone wall. This here is the uh, paintable wall, which comes from the clay wall mixed with wood, right? This here actually um, uses the same minimum requirement as the clay wall. This is the scarlet wall. Even though it didn't use grass to craft this, it actually used scarlet bars. The requirement for this uh, or behavior is similar to the behavior on this one right here. All right, so let's um, let me switch over to a character and then I will um, let me see here let me load up my yeah, show you hang on 
Let me see here. The dirt. Okay, oh yeah, sorry. Let me click on this. And I will click on this dirt punch. This guy has... The reason I'm doing this is because I want to reset my experience points to zero so that you can actually see. All right, so this guy's got zero. And uh, let me load up this little image here. Okay. So this image I actually made myself. I, I did a little cutout. All, the sand wall, turf wall, and dirt wall, right, at uh, skill level zero, right? So I actually, you know, showed you the skill level at the bottom right, left, bottom left corner underneath the minimal mining damage. So at, at, uh, at skill level zero, this sand wall right here, uh, and, and these blocks right here have a minimum uh, mining damage of 20 for experience points. All you need is is 20 points minimum, which is basically the fresh new character. You will always get experience points punching these, right? So if I punch this, right, I will get experience points on the first hit, right? The second hit and third hit, uh, you know, will take a little bit more before moving this bar up because as I explained to you that the bar at at a completely blank um, progress, the first hit it, that you do that gives experience will show up as one pixel. And that's how I was able to test all these things because I created uh, a lot of um, level zero characters and then try to mix match all of the different gear pieces to um, to come up with a magic number, okay? So let me go with the next one because that was kind of uninteresting, right? Um, And I will, I will show you. Let me see here. Oops. Let me show you the next one, which is clay. We're going to load up the clay character. Okay, clay three. Okay, let me show you this one. Okay. Um, I think this one is the, the minor, right? I picked a minor background just to show you, right? Clay actually has a minimum damage minimum damage requirement at 38 that's the cutoff right and now as a as a mining background I, I just picked this just to show you that he starts off with 23 right and and I can show you right if I hit clay with this guy right the first hit see how he's not gonna get any experience points I can do this forever and he's not gonna get any experience points you can even hear the, the whip whip sound right so the cutoff here shows 23 but the cutoff that I need is 38 right so to, to achieve 38 right I'll, let's say let me go craft the or carry this right in my hand oops right here right this shows 38 that's the cutoff let me take this off let me wear this ring okay and I put this right here see how this is 37 right this is 37 it's below my 38 minimum. If I go punch this guy with 37, still nothing, right? 37 is still nothing. So if you want to punch this, right, at, at you have to either get to level four, right, and, uh, and, and, and wear one of these rings, right? Because right now I'm level three. So if I go to level four, uh, skill points, right? Because that's how I indicated it on my chart, the bottom right corner, right? So if you can get to skill level four and wear this ring, you can actually punch this easily and get experience, right? And I can show you the cutoff, right? So let me switch this out and take this ring off. All right, now the cutoff is 38. Now watch, watch, watch when I hit this. I get experience points, right? And, and listen, you see how like, See how like this this whip 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 sound? It sounds like I'm not making any progress, right? It sounds like I'm, but I am. You see how I'm, I'm able to hit this, and this is going up, right? But the that sound effects, right? Listen, you see that's the sound effect of not making progress. That's the sound effect that you're missing. But yet I'm able to do the do the the wall breaking right here. You see that I, I've managed to break the wall. So my point here is that you can't rely on that that whip 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 sound, right? Just use the numbers I'm presenting here to, uh, for you because 
you're getting more experience points when you're actually spending the most hits on this wall that gives experience points, right? So that's that's what I wanted to, to show you here uh, for the, uh, the clay guy. Let me put this back, all right? And we'll move on. Okay, so, you know, I'm gonna have a jump state to this so you guys can jump to this later. So let me hide this clay wall. Now we're gonna do stone wall, all right? So let me switch over to the stone character. And I will show you that the the 92 is not the correct number. So this is the stone guy. All right. So if I and, and like I said, I've I've used like you know at at level zero. Uh, um. So I created like a brand new character, did a bunch of testing at level zero. This guy's at level zero. If he, he if he or she whatever character equips these particular gears. Right, and so let's go ahead and equip this. Um, what am I missing? Oh yeah, the cabling pants. Right. Oof, I thought I was missing one. There we go. So you see this? This is at ninety-two. And I'm gonna go punch. I'm gonna go punch this wall here. All right, and I'll show you. You hear that whip, whip, whip sound? It sounds like I'm missing the wall, right? I, I can't punch it or whatever, right? It's, right, it's not getting any experience points, right? It's kind of like this right here, right? The the mold wall is the, the toughest, so I'm definitely not never gonna get experience points. The sound effect between the mold wall and this one is exactly the same. I'm at 92, right? I can punch this all day, you know. I'm not gonna get experience points. It actually might break. I'll show you here in a little bit. Right, it it will break. Watch, but I'm not getting experience points. See how I was able to break the wall, not get experience. Right, and it's still making that whip 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 sound. Right, so I demonstrated to you that, you know, you can get zero experience points, break the wall as I mentioned earlier, and still hear that whip 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 sound. Right, that sounds like you're missing. All right, so let me go ahead and now show you the next um, the next item right so he, the difference between here and here is 92 and 93 right so I'm gonna switch over to a 93 right so I'm gonna I'm gonna take the what what item do I take now okay I'm gonna take this ring I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna put the ring on right and I'm gonna take the orb off okay and this this cutoff actually doesn't show ninety three for some reason, um, right? It's supposed to actually show you ninety three as a magic number cutoff, but uh, this is actually over. Um, I don't know how I managed to come up with that ninety three with this exact gear piece. It actually probably rounded up. I think that's what it did. It's supposed to say ninety three, but it rounded up to ninety four. But the cutoff is ninety three. Okay, let me see here if I can, I'll show you that in a little bit. Let me see if I can find something. Um, yeah, okay, the cut, the cutoff is 93 though, not, I, I'm over the, the cutoff right here, 94. All right, well, let me punch this anyways to show you, all right, and then we'll we'll actually, I'll, I'll show you what the, the magic number is. I could have sworn that this will say 93 here, but it, it rounded up, and I don't, I don't know why it rounded up right after I did that. Okay, but let's go ahead and punch this anyways, so I can show you. All right? See how it actually did uh, did a pixel, and I can punch this now. You see her? See how it actually went up? Right, second, third hits, and and this is actually having the sound effect whip 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 right. Right, see that? Well, I'm making progress. You see that? And this actually came out to be like nine or thirty-two hits or, or something like that to break. Right, and, and and I got full progress, right? And the sound effect was different. But the cutoff is definitely supposed to be ninety-three. Okay. But let me put all this gear back. And uh, let me show you the next slide here. Okay, so how can you get 93? 
right? Realistically, right? Because obviously at, you know, at level zero, you're never, at mining level zero, you're never just going to get 93, right? With all this gear, right? When you first start the game, unless you transfer items over to an alt character to meet this cutoff, right? You're not going to have this gear. So I want to show you realistic numbers, right? Or realistic gears, right? So early on, right, to break the stone wall, this is realistic, right? The the helm, this helm is realistic. You can actually craft this after you get tin and copper, right? Let me take this off here, of course, right? Because that's the sheet right here that I have to show you. So to get to the 93, you need to get your mining level up to five and then spend that one point over here, right? So get this skill up, right? All you had to do is just stand there and punch it for a little bit. And eventually this gets to five. And uh, see how like this bar didn't take too long to get to. Then just uh, spend the one point here, and then you can actually continue punching this, right? You notice like I was able to punch all this and didn't actually use a a, a pickaxe. So this here's realistic, right? And the next one, let's say if you wanted to be more realistic, right? Not use the helm, or just not use the helm, right? All you have to do is get to mining level eight. Right, and then use these two rings here at mining level eight. You actually and not and not have to use the helm here, right? Um, you you can actually get to the ninety three as the the cutoff. It's ninety three and not ninety four, by the way. Uh, so let me put all this back, and then I will I will show you the the next the next um, the next wall tile. Okay. And the next one is the grass tile. Okay, and the grass tile here. All right, let's go with grass. All right, so this this 177 is right below the minimum requirement, right? 178 is the actual requirement, right? So I just wanted to demonstrate to you you know, as a brand new character hitting this wall here. All right, on the first punch. You know, I can do that. I can hold this down for a while, do this whole punching thing, right? It's not going to, to put a dent on that, right? But if I go, let me unhide this now. This is the no version. See, see the difference between that and that is, is, is one point, right? So step 178. So let me actually let me get to the 174 first, right? Just to show you, right? I'm at 20. So let me wear um, every item that will give me the 174. I think the pans too. Okay, so these are all the equipments that will get me to 177, right? 177. And I will hit this wall to show you. Right, doesn't doesn't give you any experience points. I can do, keep doing this all day, and it won't give me experience points. Right, it might actually break too, and and the sound effects did not did not represent. You know, it could be broken. Right, all right. So now let's go to the next one. So how do I get up to seventy eight? Right. So to get to seventy eight, one seventy eight, I'm going to use these two sets and take this ring off, right? So now I'm at 178, right? And then I'm gonna show you, when I punch this on the first hit, it gives me experience. How about that, right? And I keep doing this, and the experience went up, like one pixel went to two pixels, right? If I keep doing this, it goes up to three pixels. You see how like, I'm actually getting experience now with this minimum cutoff and that sound effect is not the same effect as, as the breaking sound. It's the whip, whip, whip sound, right? That's why I was trying to tell you guys is the minimum cutoff sound effect is not accurate, right? I will eventually break this. And my mining, see how like my mining level went up and I was just pounding the same wall. Now I'm in, you know, level one and uh, the progress moved up. Okay, so let me, let me hide this. All right, so, okay, first of all, like, you know, when you're at level zero, you know, this is not realistic, right? You're not going to be able to get this with a brand new character at skill level zero coming out of the gate, right? 
So let's let's um, let me show you what is realistic. Okay, so this here, it, this this uh, template here that I showed you on the that I'm showing you on the bottom left corner here, this is a realistic uh, set of gears that you can get right at level ten as a minimum cutoff, minimum cutoff, right? And so you need to spend you need to be like at level ten with a um, with two points in the talent, right? 10 gets you the two talent points. And all these items here are roughly achievable, right? Because, you know, if you're in the grass wall, you already have scarlet, right? You already have like, you know, uh, scarlet bars. You should be able to craft this little orb right here, right? And these items here is, are items that you actually can get or acquired um, through, through uh, you know, killing the boss or finding them in chest or whatever it is. But now let's say, you know, the minimum mining damage here i mean let's say by this point i mean obviously by this point you're not going to have like 10 damage okay or 10 skill points you're probably going to be at like level 25 mining and the the little pickaxe at the bottom right corner right there or sorry the talent you're probably going to max that out right with five points so you probably don't even need the orb right um let me show you another one right oops not that one um Oh yeah, no, no. This is this is. I mean, this is pretty much it. The grass wall. I thought I had another slide for you to show you for realistic numbers, but that's good enough, right? So let me put all this back, um, and then we'll move on to the next one, which is the high wall. Um, actually, let me just put this all on my bar, so I can actually put it back in here instead of back and forth. Okay. So let's go with the next one, the hive wall. Uh, and I'll switch out, and then we'll go with the hive wall. It's the high zero, right? Yeah. Okay. And then let me hide this. All right. So I'm going to show you an unrealistic, you know, set of gears, right? And notice, like every time I've been showing you all this stuff, I actually don't use. I don't use the. Um, I don't use any of the pickaxe, right? I think with the example of the uh, the clay, I, I demonstrated, you know, how you can get that with a pickaxe. But besides that, um, all of these don't require a pickaxe. So this here is an unrealistic number, with a hive wall, where I can use my my bare hands, right? If I meet this 256 mining damage, and I can actually break this, right? And this is really unrealistic, but I'm showing you that, you know, once I get to that 256 cutoff, or, or go past that 256 cutoff, that I, I actually can break the wall with this, right? This is what you can, 256 is the actual cutoff. My gear actually goes over by, by two points. Um, and then let me see if I can show you another one. Let's see if this is more realistic with bare hands, right? All right, so with bare hands at level zero, which again, like I said, the only way you're gonna get all this gear is if you're getting it from a high level character at level zero, right? At level zero, I'm not gonna get this, right? But the hive wall, I can actually punch now, right, with this character. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, four, five, six, seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two. Right? It's roughly thirty-two. But see how like, I got all the experience points? And that was more than thirty-two hits, or more than twenty hits, or more than thirty hits. Right? So all those numbers that people are floating around saying, oh, if you do more than if you if you spend more than twenty hits on a wall, you're not gonna get experience and you're not gonna break the wall. That's not true, right? I just demonstrated to you that the hive wall does give you experience, right? And it does break the wall. All right, so let me show you the next uh, slide here. This is also with bare hands, right? So this first one is not was not realistic, right? Because it's starting at level zero skills. This is a little bit more realistic, right? You should be able to bare hand hit this wall this is this is these are only bare hand hand numbers, right? No no pickaxe, right? 
these numbers here are realistic and should be achievable later down the road if you get like 25 uh, mining or skills and then five points in the the mining damage right uh, and all these items here these are items that you can get um, where you can just you know bare fist this right I'm not gonna equip all this because I don't have level 25 here all right so let me show you another one that's a little bit more realistic than that okay so very common question that people ask right how do I break the larva hive walls and this number here would be a little bit more realistic right um, or or this set of gears right because early on as a new player you're you don't have all the crazy gear that I've just presented here right to get into the hive wall uh, to get this 256 minimum mining damage you will definitely need this ring and the uh, the um, the ring of rocks and ring of stones combo set you need to have a minimum of five mining skill points right and and one one uh, pickaxe right or one um, sorry one talent point over here right so this this is realistic right so all you need is then get a um, a iron pickaxe right so the easiest way to actually break that wall at level five right is to use the the iron pickaxe right so whenever somebody asks me the common question well just get a ring of rocks and uh, use the iron pickaxe right but the iron pickaxe is not required for the wall so let me show you the next slide you can actually do it with tin right so once you get to level 10 you can actually use tin a tin pickaxe if you can find the larva uh, headset or uh, the helm and the larva uh, chest piece right so these two comes from the um, the hive mother and the uh, and the glorm boss right so this you can actually use a tin pickaxe instead of the iron pickaxe and so this kind of disproves the fact that you know you don't necessarily need the um, the iron pickaxe and I, I I even demonstrated with my bare hands I didn't use a pickaxe right so I just wanted to point that out that if you want to achieve breaking the hive wall you can actually just meet this minimum requirement by wearing these gear pieces all right so let me move on and, and I'll probably make a short video about the hive wall because that's a very commonly asked question all right so the next one is the mold wall let me put this away And then we'll talk about the mold wall here in a bit. All right. I didn't forget anything. Right? Okay. So the mold wall, and I'll, I'll briefly talk about the mold wall, um, but I won't do too much on this because the mold wall, yeah, let me just go, let me just talk about it because there's, because these numbers are a little bit, Unrealistic. I don't have any characters right now. That's that's at the minimum 15 points um, because I deleted them. Uh, maybe I do somewhere, but um, I just wanted to show you, like you know, if you wanted to break the mold wall, right? Let me just load up my regular character so yeah, we can just talk about the mold wall. It is possible to break the mold wall if you meet this minimum 672 mining damage and still get experience points. If you're under this 672 you still can break the mold wall eventually, right? But you won't get experience points. So this setup right here that I've demonstrated or laid out is the minimum for breaking the mold wall and get experience, right? And that one requires, you know, the, the ancient pickaxe in this, in this little demonstration. Let me, let me hide this and give you another one, right? It's possible to use the scarlet uh, pickaxe. So let's say you're having trouble with finding the, uh, getting the ancient pickaxe to drop from Asia's, uh, um Sky Titan Bird Boss, whatever, right? If you can get to like, you know, mining level 69, right? And by, at that point in your mining career, and if you still haven't gotten the Ancient Pickaxe, you can still use the Scarlet Pickaxe so long as you, you know, wear this, this gear setup and meet this 672, right? It requires a minimum of six, level 69. You can, you can break the mold wall using this setup right but again I'm going to talk about how to break the mold wall and everything about the mold wall in a different video but I just want to briefly cover it in this so that you know you get a little bit of a 
a detailed full cover guide or a complete guide in this video. All right, so I guess I will hide this. And then now, um, okay, so this is where I show you and test my results. And finally, yes, I will demonstrate each wall with a brand new character because it's easier to, to see the experience gains, right? Uh, be sure to use the chapter jumps to, uh, to skip to the wall that you're interested in, right? Because I went through all the different walls. Um, and then I, uh, okay, so, so going back to the, the question that I mentioned earlier, right? Um, do you want to level up as fast as possible or do you want to clear out the landscape as fast as possible? Well, if you, so I'll recap again. If you want to level up as fast as possible, you want to hit up a wall that gives you the most good hit experience points before breaking. So this will, this will, um, will be the minimum movement going from wall to wall, right? Uh, this makes it efficient for leveling because you don't have to move between wall to wall. And I, I mentioned this before in the example of the 30, the 30 hit to break a wall versus you know breaking 32 walls in one shot, right? So to, to find this, right, you just need to adjust your gears that I, um, all the gears that I presented to you earlier, play around, around with the gears, right? And try to get to the closest possible to the minimum damage required for getting experience without going under. Right, because I showed, I gave you examples of it going under, and it didn't work. So if you meet the minimum damage required uh, by adjusting the equipment and trying to do the the most amount of damage to a wall before breaking it, that's going to give you the most efficient way to level up as fast as possible. Right, and then the other the other question was if you want to clear out the landscape as fast as as fast as possible, then you need to make sure that you have a that you meet the at least the minimum damage required, obviously, right? To clear clear anything, you don't want to waste your time clearing something if it doesn't give you experience points, right? Stack on all the gears that you can get that gives you the least amount of hits, right? So let's say, um, and, and and you don't want to over gear too, and I'll show you. I'll give you an example. Okay, if you're already one shotting a wall or two shotting a wall, right? Additional gears won't make a difference. If you can get that two shot down to one, right? I don't know if that. So so let's say like you know if 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 this right here, or or, or say like this one right here, right? If you're one shotting this wall, or or you're two shotting this wall, right? Or if you're two shotting this wall, for example, right? You wanna you don't wanna over gear. Like here here's an example, right? So uh, I'm gonna break this wall. See how I did this in two shot? And this is all my gear, right? Well, okay, I'm over geared, right? So I don't, let me put that wall back, right? And I'll show you like, okay, well, do I really need these mining rings here? Or do I need that crit damage, right? So if I can get, so I'm over geared for breaking that wall, right? I don't need all this. So I can wear something else, right? And watch. Okay, that didn't do, that's two, that's three hits, but let's go ahead and put this back on then, right? So one two right so I didn't need that second ring and now I actually have a free ring slot where I can actually get you know um, this polished glow ring instead of, of instead of wearing this right so you don't want to over gear if you're gonna if you're gonna break something in two shots anyways right because I when I had this I did two shots but then I took it off took it off and put this on and I got it in two shots so this is in case of like you know, you, you clear out the landscape really fast and you, you just don't want to over gear all right, so the, the third the third question is, which you know I, I'll, I'll present to you. Do you want to make a lot of money with mining? All right. In my next video, I will show you how you can power level your mining AFK and make a lot of money from the wall drops, right? And I've demonstrated this already a few times on my live stream, like in in three different sessions. Uh, but I will make a proper video. Uh, a uh, YouTube video for this so that those who want to just make a lot of money uh, mining and also AFK leveling up your your mining skills um, you can watch watch a, um, a slim version of it and and if you if you don't want to wait for my video just go ahead and um, look for my my twitch VODs and uh, you can actually you know get an idea of how to do it because I actually explain it 
Um, so let me, let me show you here all the things that you can possibly get from mining, right? Uh, obviously all the ores, right? Because ores will appear in each of the, the different walls, like the copper ore can uh, only appears in the turf wall and the dirt wall, right? It also appears in sand wall, but sand is one of those weird walls that can appear anywhere in on all the biomes. So sand will, will could also have copper ore, right? Sand could also have any of these ores, right? It really depends on the, the wall type. Because sometimes, you know, you're you're in like a forgotten ruins area and the wall type might actually be be like a dirt um, a dirt wall. So you'll, you'll see copper there, right? So same goes with tin. Tin appears in the clay uh, wall, right? So a lot of times people ask, you know, where do you find tin? Tin appears in the, the clay wall. Um, the iron ore appears in the, the stone walls. Gold is a, one of those unique um, items that can appear in any biome, in any walls, right? Gold is, is almost everywhere, right? The other one is the scarlet ores, which appears only in the grass walls, right? And then the last one, similar to gold, the ancient gemstone can appear in, in almost any walls. Okay, so these these are, are not these two are not specific to the biome or the wall type. This first this top row right here are actual valuables that come from digging the grass wall. And this is actually what you can the grass wall. So I'll give you a hint, right? The grass wall is actually the be one of the best walls to spend time mining, gaining experience points, and also getting really good valuables. So I recommend, you know, this to be the most of the grass wall being the most efficient wall to get experience and also get uh, loot for for selling valuables. Right now, this bottom row here are valuables that drop from any wall. And that is from this talent node right over here, right? So I, I placed all this. This is the best way to to do the talent um, tree here, uh, at least to make money, right? Once you hit like level 100, I, I didn't hit level 100 yet. And as you can see, like it's moving really slowly for me. Um, and this, this is ridiculous right here. Like this experience bar requirement for hits is going so slow that sometimes I can't even tell if I'm actually getting experience points. But I do know I'm getting experience points based on all my testing, right? That um, I me I've managed to meet the minimum requirement for everything. So uh, let me see what else here. Uh, so yeah, these valuables come from, and 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 also this, right? These this column here. So I mentioned. So where do these come from, right? These come from this over here, and I my drop rate was pretty good. Now it's it's probably like two or three an hour. I can get all, all this, and I've actually AFK, you know, breaking the the grass wall over and over for like six hours, five or six hours, and I got like a crap ton of this. And you'll see that in one of my videos, I actually presented what happens after like five or six hours of AFK, and what all the loot that I got. Right, I made like thirty something thousand coins just AFK. Um, all right, so one of the other things I wanted to show you was. Uh, this, the orange cave guppy from fishing does actually give you mining increase, right? So after cooking it with all sorts of stuff, right? Now. So if you notice, these are all the different things that I've cooked with the, the, gup, the guppy. They all give you plus eight mining damage increase for six months. So this is actually not very useful, honestly. You're, but I'm, I'm only pointing this out to you is that other ways that you can increase your mining damage is by using the, the orange guppy. Right, if you're absolutely missing that minimum cutoff for, for experience, and you, you can just eat eat an orange guppy, right? So, if, like I said, it's it's really this number is really small. It's not even worth worth talking about, right? It's plus plus eight. It's kind of like crafting this this wood pickaxe. It's not even important. All right, so let me um, let's go ahead and talk about the the talent tree since that's the, probably the last thing that I want to talk about, and then we'll end the video. So the first node, obviously you have to spend all your points there to get to the next, right? Uh, I decided to go with this one because, you know, hitting up walls give you, you know, increase in 25% chance to gain additional ores, the metals, uh, with walls containing ores, right? This is the best path to actually go towards this, right? The next one is mining speed, 
right? This will help you if you're trying to level up really fast. Like I said, if you meet the, if you get close to the minimum damage as much as possible, and if you stack mining speed, um, you can gain experience faster and more efficiently because this will help you do multiple hits faster, right? So I dumped points in here, and I went with this because I was chasing after the the rings and I was making a lot of money from the valuables, right? So once you hit this to 100, uh, you know, I, I, I'm I probably going to reset my talent. And then I'll, I'll put like maybe points here, 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 and here. Uh, and then maybe like one here. Or sorry, one over here, right? Uh, and then maybe like one over here or someone. Or I'll probably split between this, right? So this will be like my 20 points right here. One, two, three, four, right? These will be my 20 points. And then my 25 from 20 to tw 21 to 25 those those points I'll probably split between these two here uh, because you know you moving from wall to wall faster is probably useful and then I definitely want at least one point here maybe two points just because getting the valuables from the walls um, making money is really nice to have or I might just end up having like one two three four five this way right so this here is good definitely good to have I didn't pick this right now because I don't necessarily need the melee damage but what this does is it takes all your mining damage and then it, it multiplies it by by 10% if you max it out, 2% if it, you only put in one point, and then that gets added to your melee, to your melee damage, and that's amazing, right? Um, and this is mining speed, and it's, it's obvious, I just mentioned that. It's just basically how fast you can hit the wall staying still uh, mining. Now this here, um, so what's this? A lot of times people are wondering, well, what does this mean, right? Two tiles, visible or distance. Well, okay, so when you're first starting the game and you see these little sparkles, like the sparkles for the uh, the copper uh, in the dirt biome, well, you don't know what that sparkle is, right? So what this does is it lets you see what that sparkle is two tiles away, right? Two tiles, visible or distance. So wherever you're standing, two tiles away, you actually can tell as you get closer towards that sparkle, you'll know if that ore is a copper ore or not, or if it's a um, a gold ore or not, or if it's a, um, a an ancient gemstone or not. For the most part, if you're in a copper biome or a, a dirt biome, you're you're obviously going to know it's going to be copper. But if you if you really absolutely are chasing for gold and you don't you know you don't want to waste your time running around digging up to that block. This sparkle or this uh, night vision really helps you see into the dark, right? Uh, up to two tiles away, right? If you max this out, you'll see up to ten tiles away, right? So this, uh, I mean, this is debatable on whether it's useful or not, right? If you're you're just searching for gold, this is the only time, or ancient gemstone, this is the only time that I can think of it being useful. Now, this I've heard mixed uh, video, I guess, comments or other people saying that. Uh, it might be bugged. I haven't tested this out myself, so I cannot say, and I'm not an explosives kind of guy, but this is supposed to help you with explosive damage. So let's say you've got like a, um, a rocket launcher or the, the mortar, the hand mortar. Uh, that should supposedly boost that if you're using bombs, right? That should supposedly boost it. But I've heard reports that this actually is bugged out and it actually doesn't give the... Um, the explosive damage compared to this here, right? Um, this here gives you explosive damage. You see that? The six and this nine. But then people said that they've placed points in this and not used the helm, and they did not get the same results, right? So they must have tested it out going to 8% or something like that, and then comparing it with the the 9% or, or whatever this is, that 6%, right? So between this and this, this gives you 15%. They, they must have tested it out before saying that this doesn't do anything. I have not, so maybe I might one of these days spend my talent reset and go over here and play around with explosives. So I cannot deny or confirm that information, but this is what this explosives damage talent does. And I, I personally am not going to ever put points in there anyways for my final character, like I said, because the best use of the points would be this way, right? Because you want to you get melee damage. And the only way to get to here... So you have to put points in here, right? So, and getting extra ore, obviously, is useful, right? And then, I like this. This makes me money. So, to get to this, I mean, I either have to go to this or this. And if I'm already going this way, this is the best choice, 
it helps me cut through this to get to this. Otherwise, I have to cut through this to get to this, which I'm not going to do because then I'm going to lose out on this over here. Right. So, and this is useful because then I can actually spend split my points between these two. I mean, I could split my point on this and this, but again, I find this to be absolutely useless because I'm I'm not chasing for anything specifically. So that's it, guys. Um, the 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 talent tree. I don't think I'm missing anything. If I if I'm missing something, um, let me know. Oh, okay. I do want to point out. Okay, the if you have points in this, breaking these walls, as I mentioned earlier do give you experience points, right? Um, but they also can give you valuables. Right? I'm, not, not, I'm not saying that, you know, go build a bunch of walls and then go break them because, you know, that's not really the best thing to do. But I'm only pointing out that it is possible to get valuables from breaking your own crafted walls, right? That's, that's the only thing I, I wanted to point out. And uh, it is possible breaking this uh, in your own base, placing it down. That's how I, I was able to do the um, AFK method uh, by just taking one of these walls home and placing it and looping through that. Uh, this wall also drops um, loot similar to this over here. I actually managed to test this over and over. Except for I, I did it with, with a Scarlet Pickaxe and that does drain durability. And that's why like you know this wall is not something that you want to use for AFK or, or even break often. Um, because it drains your durability. Okay. All right. That is um, the end of the video. And so if you guys like this video, you found it helpful. I know it's very long. So just use the chapter jump to go to the wall blocks that I mentioned earlier and pull that, you know, minimum mining damage and then uh, lower your gear down if you're wanting to get the most experience points mining a wall uh, while hitting that wall over and over. And, uh, yeah, just use the chapter jumps. All right, so thank you for, for watching this video, and uh, I hope to catch you guys next time. All right. Talk to you later.